Howdy folks, Colin and Trey Lay here with Lay Roots. Lay Roots is an amazing asset protection law firm. Let's just get that out of the way here. Today, we wanna to talk about how an asset protection trust works. And so to do that, we're gonna pull up our screen here and break down the different pieces that go into this recipe. An asset protection trust is a trust designed to help you protect yourself during your lifetime. And the way that it works is that there are four main roles. Any normal trust will have a settlor, which is the person who has created your trust, a trustee, which is the person or entity managing your trust, and a beneficiary, which is the person or persons benefiting from the trust. But who are those people? Well, Colin, I'm glad you asked. They can be all you. You can be in all three of those roles. Yeah, if you're setting up an asset protection trust, you're the settlor, you can be the beneficiary, mm -hmm. and you could even be the trustee. You can. Sometimes people hire third-party trustees, but the con of that or the negative downside is that people don't want to give up access to their assets. They don't want someone else managing their accounts and their primary residence for them. They want to be the one in charge. And the issue comes in is if you don't have that third-party trustee, how do you rightfully tell someone when someone comes after you after that car accident or and slaps you with a stupid lawsuit how do you say well i don't have control you is that where this trust protector role comes in oh Trey? my gosh it is where the trust protector role comes in the wow. trust protector can swoop in and that is how the asset protection trust works is it has this fourth role the trust protector it's your hero that swoops in and severs the tie so that you can say this trust has been locked down to protect the assets. And I'm sorry, but you're going to go have to talk to somebody else about that. So essentially, <laughs> an asset protection trust lets you maintain control of your assets when you're serving as trustee, which is OK when times are good. Right. But if something bad happens, you want somebody else to come in and manage the trust for you. You can still be the beneficiary. You're, of course, always going to be the settler still. But you want to have a system set up so mm -hmm. that a, I don't know, we'll call it emergency yeah. trustee, someone who could step in and manage all of these assets for your benefit still. Yes. Or appoint someone that you trust or have vetted to be that emergency trustee. Essentially, someone who's not you. Right. And the reason that's important is, imagine you go to court or a creditor is asking you, you know, what assets do you have? What's in your control? A judge can order you to hand over your assets from a trust to your creditor if you maintain that direct control. The trusts are set up so you have that indirect control, so that's where the trust protector comes in, is that they can sever that direct control or indirect control. Either way, they can override that mm -hmm. judge's order, get another trustee set up in place, basically make it so in an emergency, you no longer exercise that control, therefore a judge cannot tell you what to do with those assets. Yes. And you're like, Boo. Sawed off, man. I don't know. Say <laughs> don't that say that. Yeah. <laughs> but you'd think it in your mind. Yeah, you'd think it in, in your mind. Yeah. So that's the basic structure of an asset protection trust. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time. Bye bye.